Sunday Sports Extra. Well, just 10 hours after Boise State polished off the New Mexico Lobos with a 42-14 victory. Some surprising news this morning. Good evening. Welcome on into Sunday Sports Extra. Jay Tess alongside Brady Frederick. Andy Avalos out as the head coach of the Boise State football team. Yeah, and I mean, this one was such a surprise for us, for the fans, really for everybody involved. The timing of it seems very really strange. After a huge win over New Mexico, suddenly now is the time to pull the trigger and make a big change for that program. Well, let's get into the timeline of the last 24 hours or so. At 11.30 p.m. last night, Boise State finished off a 42-14 victory over New Mexico. At 10.19 a.m., ESPN's Pete Thamel reported that Avalos was going to be dismissed today. At 10.40 Sources informed us that a last-minute team meeting was being scheduled for 11 a.m. The players weren't supposed to report back to the facility until later this evening. Then at 11 a.m., we were able to confirm that Avalos had indeed been dismissed as the head coach at Boise State. This video is from right around 1130 this morning from outside the Gene Blameyer football complex. Sophomore quarterback Taylor Green was a bit of a late arrival. With the short notice, not all the guys were able to get to the facility on time for the meeting. I'm told that Spencer Danielson, the defensive coordinator, addressed the team during the meeting. He will serve as the interim head coach for the rest of the season. Approximately 90 minutes after the meeting was scheduled, you could see team captains DJ Schramm and Riley Smith leaving the building along with Green and Alexander Tubner. Now we were able to obtain this letter from Boise State Director of Athletics Jeremiah Dickey one he sent to season ticket holders. Yeah it reads although these decisions are never easy and directly impact our greatest strength our people it is my responsibility to assess the direction of our program. I must make decisions that give Boise State the best opportunity to align results with our high expectations. The necessity to ensure we are positioned for success is magnified as we seek to take advantage of the expanded college football playoff in 2024. Now let's make some dollars and cents of this. Avalos still has a little over two years left on his five-year contract that he signed in January 2021. Boise State is obligated to pay Avalos 85% of the remaining value on his deal, which could be as much as approximately $3.3 million. Per his contract, Avalos is required to reasonably seek out other athletic-related employment. Whatever compensation he would receive from a future employer would then be deducted from the amount that Boise State owes him. Avalos won't necessarily receive a lump sum. He won't receive a lump sum, sum actually, but he will be paid every two weeks until his contract expires in March 2026. And with that, some significant news. Tom Scott joins us tonight, and um, we're doing things a little bit differently given the news. No Scott Slant this evening. We're just going to talk about what this means to the Boise State football program. For the first time in over three decades, uh, Boise State is in a position where they're going to have to replace their head coach after he was dismissed. And I, I think the question now is where do they go? Uh, and, and we don't have any idea where they're going to go, but do they stay within the Brotherhood or do they go outside the Brotherhood? The Brotherhood has been in effect since uh, Dirk Cutter left in 2000. He was replaced by Dan Hawkins from his staff. Dan Hawkins was replaced by Chris Peterson from his staff. Brian Harson replaced Chris Peterson after a few years away from the program, but with deep, deep roots in the program. And then Andy Avalos replaced uh, Brian Harson. So it was the Brotherhood and something that was supposed to work and continue uh, uh, in, infinitely, but it did not work out this time. So, do they seek somebody who has those tree ties to Boise State, or do they start anew? It's all a good question. And uh, in just a second here, I want to go into the, the qualities that, that Boise State might be seeking out in their next leader. Um, but I, I want to stay on Avalos and the decision and the timing of it for just a second here. And I think it's safe to say kind of where there was smoke, there's fire, right? Um, we've heard a lot over the last uh, week or so um, even actually further back than that, that there were some unhappy people, players, coaches within the Boise State football program. Did that mean everybody was unhappy? Absolutely not. But maybe it was enough to uh, help push this decision along. And there was an interesting point in last night's game that I, that I do want to point out when it comes to Taylor Green. Uh, Taylor's been through a lot this season, and uh, he lost his starting quarterback job. Last night, he was kind of the complimentary piece. Maddox Madsen goes down, and then he plays the entire second half. This was a great play on his part, a beautiful read. The defensive end jumps George, Hal George Halani. Taylor then pulls it and then sprints towards the end zone for a touchdown. Taylor is normally very animated on his touchdown runs. At least he likes to have fun with his teammates, dance a little on the field. Here he runs right past 
and Diabolos and to the bench. Um, I personally think there was some significance to this. I think that that was noticeable on the broadcast call. And uh, for Talon to kind of run right by Andy, it's something that I'm not going to overlook. I, I think that it was significant right there. Is it the reason why today's news happened? No. But um, it, it, that that was a little alarming for me at that point in time, Tom. Yeah, and I, I think it just goes to show that we never know what's going on inside the, com the football complex. That there's There are so many working pieces in there and that you just assume that the culture is good and that, that everything's rolling along nicely. And, um, there, there has been something in this. Mm -hmm. it, it really is weird to see. I remember on the field watching it, the, not only him running by Andy Avalos, but him just running straight off of the field, getting right back to the bench, mm. almost felt a little bit like he was sending a message. I mean, yep. what is Taylor Green known for? It, his dance moves, yep. his celebrations with his teammates. I had that vibe a little bit like when the rookie hits a home run and no one, no one wants to high five him, but uh, less fun, like a little, like something was off. Something was off, and. Uh, you know, I, I have sources that suggest that maybe there was sugge a, a suggestion, a, a suggestion amid the uh, amidst the struggles from the program, that maybe there there shouldn't be dancing after touchdowns. Maybe prior to the Memphis game, there was something about players wearing jewelry and stuff like that that didn't necessarily go over well um, with, with Andy Avalos. And so those are all things that you know I, I think that they started away on on some players. In, in all honesty, and. Um, it just got to a point where this, this was too far down the road to turn back, and, and now with a couple weeks to go in the, in the regular season, Andy Avalos has been dismissed. Well, uh, There's a Jer lot Jer there. Yeah, Jeremiah it, Dickey wants to get a head yeah. start, too. He, he specifically referred in the letter to uh, Boosters uh, getting a head start on 2024 and the college football playoff berth that's available to the group of five in uh, 2024. Mm -hmm. he, and so he wants to get a head start on that. My feeling uh, on the head coaching position is that they've got to find somebody who is going to know how to deal with NIL. Mm -hmm. And the Eric McAllister issue, there are going to be other issues like that coming down the pike. Yep. Somebody who knows how to deal with that, navigate that, and build a roster that can, uh, can not be affected by yep. that. As we kind of critique the culture, I, I, I am right there with you, Tom. You know, I think this is a tremendous moment to hit the reset button on Boise State football, right? We hear so much about the brotherhood, the standard, the culture. Well, there is a new era of college football, and it is being impacted heavily by NIL and the transfer portal. And focusing on those two things, but specifically NIL, Boise State for so long has been known as the blue-collar program. I feel like the NIL almost defies the, uh, what that actually means, right? And it's doing less with more. It's being tougher. Yeah, sure, tougher can still be part of the equation, but you can't necessarily always do less with more when more money is out on the table uh, because th that's just it, – it's just a new era, right? And so now how do you uphold the standard of the winning percentage here at Boise State – but also find the encouragement, the motivation, the creativity to make up the gap that you're simply not going to be able to make up when it comes to the it comes to NIL and the collectives and some of these Power Five schools that can pay millions of dollars to put a team on the field. That's never going to be Boise State. It just is what it is. So how do you find the encouragement, the enthusiasm, the energy to overcome those hurdles? It's a tremendous time to hit reset. I will say this: the athletic department has the exact right leader in place to try to tackle that, in my opinion, and Jeremiah Dickey. Yeah, I think it's all about who has the best plan to navigate NIL and the transfer portal. Who is going to manage that mm -hmm. the best? And, and there are great candidates out there. Boise State is still going to be an attractive job uh, at the group of five level. And moving forward, it's, you know, forget about the power five anymore and, and playing the power five and can we beat the power five. It's, it's about being the best mm -hmm. group of five team that you can be. That is, that's what it is moving forward. Well, especially with the expanded playoff, it's not going to matter anymore if, if, if you're in the Power Five or what. If you can get to the playoff, you're going to have the opportunity to compete for championships. And I think as we see this develop, we're not going to see conferences really play as big of a role uh, as they used to in the past. To your point, the NIL thing is a big deal. We're in the player mm -hmm. empowerment era. Uh, and, and we're talking about it. We don't know all the facts yet necessarily, but people are upset and the head coach got fired. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, to have that coming within your program, kind of new territory within the NIL sphere, I would say. Yeah, and 
I mean, we talk about this too, and you want to compare it to like a school like Oregon. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a school geographically relevant. Boise State is 3-0 all time against the Ducks, and soon, uh, as, in, as in next year, Boise State is going to step on the field against Oregon. It is going to be so wildly different from the previous mm -hmm. three battles that yeah. they did, and you're looking at a school that has, you know, lucrative NIL deals. I mean, there might be a given point in time, I'm not sure exactly, but when these two teams are on the field, you might have Boise State guys with, you know, I don't even know the collective value of what their NIL deals would be, but Oregon State starting 11 might have $10 million worth of NIL right. deals. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy how, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff, once it becomes more, like, public, I mean, it really is pretty eye-popping. It's four figures against seven it, is basically Pretty what much. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So um, moving forward now, Spencer Danielson is going to be the leader. Uh, this is a guy that took over the program when Brian Harson uh, decided to go to Auburn in 2020. I, I think this is a good move on Boise State's part. Danielson got here in 2017 as a graduate assistant. He's coached the D-line, linebackers, edge position, and now he's serving as the defensive coordinator. But this is a guy that the players really love, and I think a reason why is because, gosh, if we know anything about Spencer Danielson, he loves the players back. Right, and he's a fireball, too, and, and it's very likely that going down to Utah State was still a lot to play for mm -hmm. this season that the team really sells out for him from what I have heard and um, again I want to reiterate not everybody is like elated about this news that is, right. that is certainly not the case but I do I have heard that there was a nice little rallying cry within the football team today and I think that they will respond I think that they're going to play really hard for Spencer Spencer Danielson over these last two weeks and more than anything everything's still on the table they can still win the Mountain West Conference Championship. They can still host the Mountain West Conference Championship after Air Force was upset at Hawaii and San Jose State smashed Fresno State. The Broncos and Falcons still play each other in two weeks. So there is a lot still on the table here. You saw a lot of the players tweeting, finish today. Yeah, right. absolutely. And one of the things I love about the, the move putting Spencer Danielson in there is, is, like we said, if you ever watched a press conference, he will mention multiple times how much he cares about these guys mm -hmm. and how much he loves them. They've been through a lot this season. It's been, a, it's been up and down, even up before a, a major coaching change. They're going to have fun in, mm -hmm. the, in this final stretch, and it's going to really matter. I agree. I want to touch on the transfer portal again really quick because when we ask about the timing of this decision, I think it is significant. The transfer portal opens on December 4th for all of college football, but it is important to note, if your head coach is fired, then the transfer portal opens immediately. So if a Boise State player wanted to enter the transfer portal tonight, he could do so freely since head coach Andy Avalos has been removed from his position as the head coach at Boise State. Now, I think a lot of these guys are going to be motivated to finish out the rest of the regular season, and that is important because it basically gives Boise State about a two-and-a-half, three-week window to come up with a plan to show the vision of the future, to motivate guys that they want to be a part of this, to rebuild the trust that maybe was lost with some of these players in Andy Avalos. And um, these next three weeks are going to be absolutely critical. And I think that I don't think the Boise State could have waited to the end of the regular season, given the current rules and, and structure of college football, to make this move. They had to make it now. They have three weeks to win back everybody back over and try to keep them here as a member of the Boise State football team. It's just, it's just amazing to think that it came to that uh, mm -hmm. because yeah, I thought there, there might be a change at the end of the season, yep. but I did not think it was going to happen today. Yep. You know, it makes a lot of sense, but also the, 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 the timing of it, it's a tough task ahead to, get, to, get, to keep some of these guys here. They're going to have a lot of money thrown their way by potential NIL, mm -hmm. other, other teams. Uh, so I, I think they're in the right position to try to do their best in this situation. But I'm just saying it's, it's, it's going to be difficult moving forward. Yeah, it's, this is all going to be pretty fluid here over the next couple of weeks. These coaching uh, tracking hires is, is never going to be fun. The list of candidates, I mean, I think that Boise State is still a really coveted job. The blue turf, the turf, the tradition. Now that you have the support, the, support, the, yeah. the athletic directors, there's, there's a lot in place, a lot of opportunity. Tom, we appreciate you joining us yeah, tonight. Thank you. All right, what does Bronco Nation think of this? We found out earlier today. When you're head coach, it all falls on your shoulders. But I, I think Andy has done a good job, and I hope nothing but the best for him in the future. Kind of the mentality that the team kind of has, they don't really, seems like the chip's a little gone. The chip on the shoulder's gone. It's an unusual thing 
here. This has been a very successful program for decades. We got a top-notch AD who's come in and said, you know, I know when to cut bait. I know when it's time to move on and, and find something new. You know, my role is to support them no matter what, no matter who the head coach is, no matter what's going on. I mean, that's what fans do.